Captain Lark trudged along the road. The village needed help with the fields, and he was willing to pay back their goodwill. One of the blacksmiths had seen an option by the river. It was a desperate attempt, but all that they could think of. Nain could be heard by the shoreline. Creeping forward, he found a black horse standing on the muddy shores. Its hooves were twisted about, backwards. Its long mane undulated like a serpent. It snorted as it pawed at something on the ground. Captain Locke didn't look closer to it. The smell of flesh and blood was heavy in the air. His fingers were wrapped tightly around the bit in his hands. Stepping forward, he made his move. Welcome back to Mythical Phlogion Adventures. I'm your guide, Jason. Today, we meet the famous seahorse called the Kelpie. Let's take a look at the strange and fanciful biology to understand why it is both prized and feared at the same time. The Kelpie comes from Scottish and Irish lore. It is a dangerous creature that lives near any body of water. They look like a midnight black horse, but the hooves are backwards. The hair of its mane has one account that says it looks like a serpent, but others disagree and say it looks like a normal horse. The Kelpie is a beautiful looking beast, which fascinates those who see it. Children in particular are drawn to it, they play with it and climb on its back. Then it runs into the water and drowns the children, eats them, and leaves their entrails on the shoreline. Only one boy survives according to the tales. He had his hand placed on the Kelpie, but couldn't pull it off. He only survived by cutting off his own hand. The Kelpie is a shapeshifter. Most stories talk about how it takes the form of an old man with weeds in his hair. And there is one account of appearing as a young man where it married a young woman who knew what he was. There is also one tale of the Kelpie taking a female form. Overall, we know a fair amount about this creature. So where do we start with understanding it? Let's start with why once you lay a hand on a Kelpie, you can't remove it. What options do we have? An electrical current? No, that wouldn't work. A Kelpie can bind itself to anything, including cloth or the back of your hand. No, but what about an adhesive? I touched on hagfish when I looked at the Mimic a few months ago, and it seems to have something similar here. The hagfish produces a compound which adheres to prey to prevent it from escaping. This compound mixes with water, but doesn't work with a Kelpie. It will need to secrete a similar substance from its skin. A strong glue, so to speak. Most likely, we are dealing with a water-based compound due to that being the easiest material for an aquatic animal to produce, particularly if it works with its urinary system into the process. It can make it easier. Now, you're probably thinking that this would smell, and the answer is probably not. Birds release it in a solid compound that requires less water but higher energy demand, important for flight. This is done to save water and weight. Humans and most terrestrial animals release it in a liquid form, since we don't need to fly. Fish and aquatic animals choose a variant which is low energy demanding, but requires a lot of water, something that they have ready access to. Now, the Kelpie lives near water. Most support only freshwater sources, but there are tales of them living near seawater. A few places where they have plenty of water, so no. The adhesive compound they release probably wouldn't smell much more than lake water. That means it will be hard to notice. Interestingly, the kelpie doesn't eat all of the guts of those it drowns. It eats the meat, but not the intestines. This is odd. The guts are often among the first thing eaten by predators. So why does the kelpie ignore them? The simplest answer? Bacteria. There is a laundry list of bacteria in the guts of animals that aren't found anywhere else. If some of them are deadly to a Kelpie, we would avoid eating them. Why? The answer is a little odd. One of the Kelpie's weaknesses is a silver bullet. Silver is said to be the metal of truth, and has the power of reflecting the magical powers of monsters back upon them. Now, the Kelpie is a shapeshifter. It can take human form. This means reshaping its organs, bones, and muscles to a human's appearance. This doesn't mean changing the type of cells, but reshaping the tissues. Bones of the heart and the ones that will struggle the most. Osteoclast and osteoblast are used to destroy and lay down new bones respectively. The Kelpie will need to be able to control these two and accelerate their operations to reshape their bones. Neat little bit of spell work here. It will also have to control the muscle volume and organ size. And this is where the silver reflecting the magic comes into play. 
If the Kelpie's power is reflected back, it loses control of its appearance. Now if that includes the heart or brains being liquefied completely, that will kill it. According to the tells, a Kelpie that has been shot by a silver bolt is reduced to a mass of jelly-like substance. This brings me back to why the Kelpie won't eat intestines. The bacteria in the gut is key. When the Kelpie is reshaping its body, its immune system will need to be ramped up. The dendritic white blood cells in particular will need to be highly active. But if the stomach contacts and the corresponding bacteria leak out during this process, the Kelpie will have a widespread infection through its body, potentially a deadly infection at that. That's why the Kelpie avoids the entrails. Now, while shapeshifted, the Kelpie is able to sire children, mostly with regular horses, but a few with human women. A child born from a Kelpie is unable to be drowned. Kelpie aren't listed as having gills, which means their lungs need to do the respiration. Yet, it could be possible to use its shapeshifting ability to create gill-like structures along its neck or flank to breathe. If not, then we can bring water into the lungs and use the modified urinary tract to excrete the water out of the lungs and body. This will help it avoid having the built-up torso that I talked about in the marrow video. Would this pass on to the offspring? It would seem so. Now, a Kelpie is said to have the strength of 10 horses and nearly limitless endurance. The strongest of horses can carry 300 pounds or 140 kilograms on its back, pull up to 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms. That means a Kelpie is able to carry 3,000 pounds or 1,400 kilograms and pull 20,000 pounds or 9,000 kilograms. That's a lot of power. There are two battles when facing the Kelpie, one on land and the other in the lake. Now let's start with the second first, an electrical attack will rip through it, but just be on land or a wooden boat. If not, use a spear in the water or ice magic to keep the distance in the fight. But most interactions with Kelpie are on land, it will try and get you to touch it. Don't! Use range, a silver tipped bow, an arrow, a bullet, or that spear again. You can use fire to trap the Kelpie and hold it in place. It will fear rushing through it. That will open up time to move the fight in your direction. So what happens if you do touch the Kelpie? First off, you screw it up. Best if you touch the Kelpie through cloths that you can shed. If it is your skin, you might need to cut off the limb. Set a tourniquet fast or cauterize the wound instantly. But I have a better option. If the Kelpie's ooze is water-based, an oil could wash it away. Additionally, a power could also achieve the same thing in theory. Now, there is an important issue discussed with the Kelpie. This varies from story to story, but there are two common ones. The first is, if you can fit a bridle with a cross on over the Kelpie's head, it will serve you. The other is, if you can take the Kelpie's own brawl, then it will serve you. When the Kelpie turns into a human, its bridle will appear as a necklace. This leads me to believe that the Kelpie's bridle is not true, but a result of shape-shifting. So, why do we pull this off? We'll get to that in a minute. Now, to get the bridle over the Kelpie's head, you'll need to touch it. That means being bound to it. I already say that touching the Kelpie is a bad idea. So, we need to restrain it without touching it. No grabbing. Option one is a net. But the Kelpie is a shapeshifter and could wriggle out of it with time and luck. But if you are fast, you can slip in and put the bridle on. While the Kelpie is an aquatic animal, it can still be immobilized if using spells to create a sand trap or an ice trap. I wouldn't create a bog-like trap due to that being part of the Kelpie's home environment. You could also try digging a pit trap, but that will require time. And you'll have to dig it near the river where the Kelpie may be watching you. There is another option. Kelpie are intelligent, and could be reasoned with. They have been known to fall in love with people. This will require some negotiation to deal with. The Kelpie is a powerful creature, but lacks any range attacks. So long as you keep your distance, you can avoid both its brute force and the sticky skin. Ultimately, this is why I need to place the Kelpie at a 4 of 10 for difficulty. Just fight smart, don't do anything stupid, and you'll be fine.
if you manage to get the bridle on the Kelpie, you can force it to aid you. Their strength is unmatchable for a normal horse. It can drag massive boulders to build a castle. It can also work the fields all day without resting. This is a powerful asset for anyone working in a labor intensive job. Farms, construction, and the like. I know a merchant caravan that employs a Kelpie. It drags silver carts behind it without even the slightest difficulty for days. The only limitation they have to deal with is the Kelpie doesn't go far from water. But Kelpie are known to be spiteful. Those who have taken them have earned their ire. Not just from the one on your side, but others. They may hunt your family and drown them one by one. This would be a dangerous gamble, but if the Kelpie joins you of its own free will, it can be a valuable ally. Now, if you do kill the Kelpie, what is left? The first question comes in how it is killed. If by silver, its body will turn into a jelly-like paste. This will be usable in multiple potions for water breathing, a transfiguration potions, strength potions, and stamina potions. In this form, the process is much easier. If killed by a sword, the body won't dissolve. This means you can get the meat. It has a texture more like fish than horse. The skin can be used in leather, but it is far from water resistant. It doesn't work well as a water bag, but it does fine in decorative pieces and ceremonial garments. Its bones are dense and perfect for making tools and decorations. Captain Lark acted first. Magic pulled in his hand before being shot out into a wall of fire that engulfed the Kelpie. It thrashed about as waves of heat and crashed down on it. Captain Lark slipped into the circle of flames. Clutched his hand was a bridle. Come now. The village just needs a little help in the fields for a few days. They'll give you plenty of food to eat in exchange. Please, it's just a quick job, he begged. The Kelpie didn't care for the offer and rushed. It was fast. The sailor drove sideways and swung the bridle towards it only for the Kelpie to beat it away with its large head. A porous shot. He skidded in the mud as he turned around. In that moment, his hand connected with the Kelpie. In an instant, he was frozen in place, bound to the beast. The Kelpie rushed the flames and the river beyond. Captain Lark chilled his face as he was dragged towards the ring of fire. His flames weren't working, but he knew another element. Gritting his teeth, Captain Lark called upon lightning. At this range, the Kelpie couldn't dodge, nor could he avoid it. Lighting danced over the Kelpie and the sailor. It neighed and reared up in pain. The sailor was used to pain at this point, though. In that moment, Captain Lark threw the bridle over the Kelpie's head. Panting, he relaxed as the beast chewed on the bit. Sorry to be so forceful, but please let me go. The Kelpie struggled for a minute before relenting. Captain Lark dropped to the ground, but his fingers kept a firm hold on the bridle. Let's go. It's only for one week. We need help clearing the fields to replant. You'll be fed well for your work. The Kelpie neighed its understanding and went with the man back towards the village, displeased with the arrangement. The Kelpie is a powerful creature. It is far from a nightmare, one that can be a potent aid in many conditions. If handled with care, it is a simple situation to handle. Thanks for watching, adventurers. Please return next week, where we shall be facing the divine elephant, Aravata. Until then, I'll see you on the roads.